Okay, good morning. Thank you for joining me on another video. Um, it is mostly cloudy. Uh, sun's breaking through just a few small breaks in the clouds, but mostly it's uh, dark and misty. And so I'm headed out this morning to photograph some waterfalls. Uh, I have two in particular in mind that I'm going to hit. Uh, the first one is uh, going to be Log Hollow Falls. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of a hike. It's uh, around half a mile or so from the uh, parking area. The uh, second one is Slick Rock Falls, which is, uh, I don't consider it a hike at all. It's more like an easy walk. Um, just uh, maybe, oh, 50 yards or so, perhaps, from the, um, from the parking area there. Um, so it's a, it's a perfect day for shooting waterfalls. It's cloudy, it's dark. Uh, the, all that helps uh, slow down your shutter speeds for that nice silky uh, soft water look. Um, and uh, so I'm kind of counting on that. <laughs> Sun, sun's out right this minute, but I can't imagine it's going to be out for very long. Um, I just turned off onto the uh, Forest Service Road here to access both these waterfalls, so it's bound to be a little bumpy here. Um, but uh, I'm uh, hoping to be able to shoot some video at uh, both these waterfalls, and I'll talk about uh, my technique. Um, I, I hate to call them tricks, but, uh, but my tricks for taking great waterfall photography. And that really starts with uh, cloudy, overcast, uh, even, uh, even misty days. Um, the, uh, the next thing I do is uh, use a, the highest possible aperture. I don't necessarily go up to the highest aperture. Uh, I try to avoid shooting at f22 if I can uh, because of diffraction, but f16 or f18 usually works. And I usually use the lowest possible ISO. Um, on my camera, that's ISO 50. If your camera can only go down to ISO 100, that's perfectly all right too. You can, uh, you can do that just fine. And the combination of those three things, cloudy day, high aperture, low ISO, will allow your camera or you to choose the slowest possible shutter speed that you can get. Um, for most waterfalls, if I can get my shutter speed down to one or two seconds, uh, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Half a second works if it's uh, the right kind of waterfall, if the water's moving uh, rather rapidly. Um, half a second will work just fine, but somewhere in that neighborhood ought to uh, give you the nice, uh, uh, soft, uh, silky water look that I'm, that I'm looking for. Uh, so, uh, I got a few minutes more to the um, next waterfall, or the first waterfall, and uh, I will uh, join you again at that time. Thanks! All right, so I'm at my very first waterfall. This is Log Hollow Falls. It's about a half mile up the uh, Forest Service Road here just behind me, an old logging road. Uh, and uh, I'm all loaded up. I have the R5 with the Sigma 24 to 105 and the uh, Hida filter holder system with the uh, polarizing filter uh, in place here. This polarizing filter just clips in and um, uh, that's ready to go. There's a little adjustment knob here on top. Uh, I may do a separate video on that system because I like it so well uh, and I've recommended it a number of times. Uh, but I am going to set out on the trail about a half mile walk or so and uh, we'll see what uh, waterfall looks like when we get to the other end. All right. Well, I've arrived at the waterfall, uh, as you can probably see and hear uh, behind me. Uh, I hope you can hear me over the waterfall noise. It's a beautiful little waterfall. Not a lot of water flowing over it this morning, but, uh, but that's all right. We'll work with what we have. Uh, there is a small trail um, just to my right that leads back to a clearing uh, almost at the base of the falls. I'm going to go in and shoot from there. Uh, the shooting isn't bad from this location either. It's a nice vertical composition. Uh, zoom in a little bit uh, to uh, get rid of some of the um, uh, stuff, the, the growth around the waterfall, um, and um, 
makes for a nice shot here too. But what I'm after is in a little bit closer uh, toward the base of the falls. Uh, the sun is coming in and out. Uh, it's uh, behind the clouds right now, so really nice conditions right now. Uh, it is just something you have to keep an eye on when the sun comes out. Just stop shooting for a few minutes and, you know, enjoy the view. Uh, and then when the sun goes back in, start shooting again. Um, as I said, I'm going to set the camera for the lowest possible ISO. In my case, that's 50. Uh, I'm going to set a relatively high aperture. That's going to be f16 or so. Uh, as I said before, don't necessarily want to go all the way up to f22. Uh, because of diffraction, you can lose some sharpness that way, but F16 seems to work uh, just fine. Uh, and then adjust the polarizer to get rid of the glare. I'll shoot some video of that as well, uh, so you can see the effect the polarizer has. And uh, as I said, I'm, I'm looking for a shutter speed of around one second or so um, to uh, see if I, can, if I can get that. If I can't quite get that, I'll get it as slow as I can get it. All right? So that's my technique. Uh, let's step on into the woods here and take a closer look at the falls. And, uh, and, and do some shooting. So in just a couple of minutes since I shot the last clip, a uh, huge cloud has come over the sun. It's gotten very dark. Ideal conditions for the waterfall. Uh, I've made it into a little clearing. This is a great spot to shoot from, except that uh, I'm not a huge fan of that tree. You can probably see that tree cutting right across the base of the waterfall. So I'm gonna have to do something to eliminate that. I think I'm gonna work my way across the stream to shoot at the base of that tree and do a vertical composition right here in front of the waterfall. Now, that's not going to be very hard to do. The water in the stream is relatively shallow. There's some rather large rocks to, um, to uh, rock hop across to get to the, uh, to the other side. Um, and I think it'll be pretty easy to do. The challenge here, of course, is to keep the feet dry. <laughs> so um, I don't want to go back to camp tonight with, uh, with wet feet. So. Um, so I think I see a nice path right here uh, below, and uh, I'll leave the uh, video running for a few minutes as I um, as I go across to that spot. So here goes. I'm right at the base of the falls now, and uh, you probably hear it. I hope you can hear me over it. Uh, if, uh, if you can't, uh, if my voice doesn't come out so well, then I'll do a voiceover for this part. Um, there's a little bit of uh, mountain roll, like here's a rhododendron, um, on the left-hand side here that's obscuring a part of the waterfall. Uh, and so it's not in bloom. Unfortunately, it's not in bloom. I would use that as a foreground. Uh, but it's not, it's just green leaves, so I'm going to have to work myself a little bit further to the, um, to the left here to clear that. Um, since, from my perspective, the waterfall is now tall and thin, uh, I am going to turn and do a vertical composition. Um, and one of the things that people will forget to do when they go from horizontal to vertical is to reorient the polarizer. Remember, when you rotate the camera, you are rotating the polarizer as well. And so you have to remember to orient that polarizer back correctly, uh, otherwise it's not being effective at all. So in this case with the filter holder, all I have to do is rotate that uh, adjustment knob back to the vertical, and uh, I've, I've adjusted the polarizer right back to the starting spot. So the sun is going in again. I'm going to slide over to my left just a little bit more and grab a few shots.
sun's starting to come back out just a little bit now, so I'm going to take a quick break here uh, and uh, wait for it to go back in. So, uh, a couple of things you may have seen me do. First of all, the hat goes into redneck mode, otherwise it bumps into the camera when I'm shooting vertically. Um, I adjusted the polarizer, fine-tuned the polarizer to get just the effect that I want. Uh, vertical composition. Um, I tend to focus on the closer part of the waterfall. There's a rather large orange-colored boulder here in the front. That's my point of focus because you always get more depth of field beyond that point of focus than you do in front. So I'm using that F-16 aperture to give me a lot of depth of field. So I should be sharp from that point. A little bit in front, but a lot behind all the way to the top of the waterfall. Uh, so that's my technique. Um, I am, uh, again, just uh, waiting on the sun to go back in. It's uh, coming out a little more brightly now, uh, but there are still plenty of big dark clouds up there, and it'll go back in in just, uh, just a little bit. So uh, I'm going to be here for just a little while longer. I'm going to go in um, a bit closer to the waterfall and uh, shoot some details, zoom in and get some details, because one of the things I like to do uh, with a waterfall is not just shoot the entire waterfall. That's great, you know, I love to do that, but I also like to get in closer, zoom in, and get some of the details in the waterfall. Uh, once I've established that exposure for the cloudy sky, um, I shouldn't have to adjust it, but maybe a third of the stop one way or the other to maintain the, um, the correct exposure. And uh, all I'm doing is watching, I keep an eye on the histogram, I also keep an eye on the blinky highlights to make sure that I'm not blowing out the, the white water. That's pretty easy to do. Um, it's a little better um, when it's cloudy. It's a little easier to keep from blowing out those highlights when it's cloudy. Um, so that's one of the reasons I wait for the uh, for the sun. I wait for the, the clouds to, or the sun to go behind the cloud. Um, so uh, I got a few more images uh, from here that I want to take, and I'm going to get in a little closer and. Um, I'll let you catch up with me in just a few minutes. Well, that was a lot of fun. I think I got some great images. Uh, assuming I did, I'll put some here at the end of this video. Um, looks like most of the morning clouds are burned off. There are some still, uh, there are still some big clouds up there. Um, and uh, I, I know it'll get cloudier uh, and, uh, and clear up as the day goes on. It's in and out like that. Um, has been for the last couple of days. I'm gonna head off to my second waterfall. That is uh, Slick Rock Falls. A whole lot easier to get to, um, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. I, um, I think with uh, as little water is uh, flowing over Log Hollow here, that um, that uh, Slick Rock might be a little bit on the dry side as well. But we'll go take a look and see uh, see what happens. So um, come on along, and uh, I'll uh, see you when we get there. Okay, so just an update for you. Uh, I have decided to forego the second falls. Uh, I am sitting here in the parking lot at uh, Slick Rock Falls. Uh, and uh, several reasons I've decided not to do that. First of all, it's late enough in the day now that uh, all of the morning clouds have burned off. 
um, and the waterfall is sitting on the sunny side of the mountain, so the top part of the waterfall is in full sun. Um, and uh, the third reason, uh, it is mobbed. Uh, just had a van full of hikers pull up and uh, several personal vehicles and stuff, and there are a lot of people up there. It's a very popular spot, so I, I wasn't, uh, I'm not surprised at all uh, that it's uh, that crowded. Um, uh, photographer and uh, author David Middleton once said, the difference between an amateur and a professional is knowing when not to shoot. Uh, and so this is one of those situations where my experience has uh, led me that, to uh, uh, shooting is not going to be good here this morning. So I am, or, or this afternoon now, it's just a little bit afternoon. Um, and so I know the results will be poor, so I'm not going to go up there and, uh, and do any shooting. And uh, so uh, I may head back up on the uh, parkway uh, and do some flower photography, a lot of rhododendron and mountain laurel up there. Uh, I may go back to camp. It's about lunchtime, so I may go back to the campsite and, do, uh, and grab some lunch and head back out on the parkway later on. Uh, but uh, one way or the other, I'll do some photography this afternoon and uh, let you join me. All right. So thanks again for joining me, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon in another video. Thanks. Bye-bye.